Hi and welcome to this guided tour for BlazerChat.com or actually it's an open source project BlazerChat but I also have the website live just to kind of show you it's BlazerChat.com what I usually do to test is I open up another browser instance I'll open up an Edge or a Firefox also so I'm just gonna go to BlazerChat.com I already have my user created and I'll show you how to create a user here in a second because I want to show you the validation component and the progress bar that I built they're both kind of cool so, so this I was already chatting a little earlier so these messages came up because they're right now it only stores the last it stores messages in memory and only stores the last 20 I haven't even written anything yet to purge messages but it tends to sometimes just uh, if no one's logged on it, it, it I think it just like uh, erases them or it creates a new subscriber when people do log on but anyway I'm gonna go ahead and move on the only thing I'm gonna show you here is you can type a, a link like blazerchat.com is cool let's see if that works of course it doesn't but if you put I've got I had that work and it's not working now we try to show someone else but if you post it as a full link it does work and then I can just do this you can click on it and they're not gonna you know, log in again but so that's um, I don't know why my little uh, it's supposed to work let me try that again I thought that worked that did okay for some reason my other I've got to look at my logic where I take if you just type in a something without a you know if you type in a name URL without the HTTP or HTTPS it's supposed to add the HTTPS but it's I didn't test it I just wrote it really quick so okay so we're gonna go ahead and go over to Visual Studio it's enough of me talking so let's close down all our browsers and I'm gonna just show you a little guided tour first we have a components directory and I have four components we have a chat, join, login, and speech bubble. The speech bubble is just the messages, and the chat kind of hosts the speech bubble and handles you connecting and making sure you have a user. And then the join is where you sign up a new user, and the login is where you log in after you've signed up. That's for the kind of UI part, and then the index page in the pages directory. I'll just show you that briefly. If you have a logged in user, then your this is for the top kind of the header then the sign out uh, the sign out button is shown else you have a login and a sign up button if you're a unlock if you're not a registered user or not signed in and then there's this is all the code for the components you have a join component and where I set parent equals this that's because this is an iBlazer component parent and this is an i the join component is an iBlazer component same with a login this is a I you know and then the chat is the exact same thing so all the chat component is an iBlazer component parent and it's also an iBlazer component so it can talk to the index page and I'll kind of show you some of that here in a second but I'm just gonna and if the message exists the message appears oh this is the message at the bottom so I'll show you like if you run the program I'll show you really quickly where it just says welcome to blazer chat is what I believe that's where that's gonna yeah and then there could be some other okay so I'm not gonna run it again that's what, okay so now I want to just go ahead and briefly show you the how it works as far as the subscriber service that's our services class right here this class is injected into the chat component and I realize I'm jumping around but I'm kinda just this is just kind of a, a winged it tour I was trying to make a video for about two weeks and I've been too busy doing absolutely nothing you know between playing chess and walking my dog and other things so I decided to make a bunch of videos no matter what even if I'm not uh, very making good videos but a video is better than no video okay and here's our register with server method I'll just start here when you click connect that's I'm gonna go to register with server I'll just search for it but I know it's gonna go to the the code behind for this okay so here I'm in the register with server method first thing it does is it creates a subscriber message and a subscriber message is just a message with a you subscribe to which has a callback and the callback is just a delegate and I'm gonna go into the listen method very briefly just to show you the listen method and this is when a message comes in if it's a system message basically a system message means a user logged in or a user logged off then I have to have it called get subscriber names for each of the clients so that way the names is the list is refreshed so it's kept updated and then else it gets the messages so I just call get broadcast messages and it has a display messages count hard-coded right now of 20 
it's been on my list to make a you know a slider or a little drop down or something but basically I just wanted to get first version out to refresh just to show you that all refresh does is call invoke async and a status state has changed so that's I just put it in a method so I can call that really easily because that's I can type that now but that's harder to type than refresh is why I put it like that okay so now we have our subscribe I want to click the send message right here okay now send message is a subscriber message and there's a boolean here for is private which is or or it's just going to be a broadcast message means it goes to everybody now the only time is private is set to true is when you click a name and if you go to I'll go back to my chat component we have our list of names let me just show you here's here's our subscriber names they're, they're all actually subscriber callbacks but they all have a name and they here's this little uh, on click equals action event args and what I'm doing here is I'm passing in the GUID the unique identifier for each user to that name so it's so like when I call this method the method is called send private message clicked let me go to that and it passes in the event args and the, the GUID the globally unique identifier is the 2ID which I'm not actually using the event args but I am using the 2ID because I use that to find the subscriber and if I find the subscriber I send the private message and notice here I set true that's where that is private where the other the broadcast message just sets false when it calls that so that's all I'm going to show for that let me close down this now I'm going to show you what I think is kind of neat the singleton class that kind of made this whole thing possible here's our configure services so we have an add singleton and here's our subscriber services which is that class that I showed you in the services folder this is only created one time with an add singleton so every user that logs in is sharing the same subscriber service I looked at gRPC I probably looked at five projects I didn't like any of them as far as the amount of work it was all I wanted to do was talk to a user on my site that's also on my site you know you don't really need gRPC for that you kind of whistle down the hall hey I'm right here you know instead of you know having to send a message through the mail to your next door neighbor kind of thing but that's what it, that's what gRPC seems like to me briefly here's the subscriber message and the subscriber callback the subscriber message is just a here's some properties you know and bubble color is randomly created shuffler equals new shuffler and what random shuffler is it's it's kind of like instead of using a random number generator a random shuffler I use it first for cards my I had a program called card counter I'm still working on but it basically it does true shuffling so it creates like here the minimum number is one I'll just show you the properties one is the minimum six is the maximum and then sets to initialize and here in this case I only want to do one because in theory I want it to change colors the bubble color every message but it has to reshovel so there's times there's going to be the same color on the end that the that's the first one of the last time but basically and then I and again shuffles 10 times because this is like lightning fast I mean you could do 10,000 there unless you have a you know a really really old computer it's going to just zoom through it okay and then let me go to bubble color I'll show you very quickly bubble color okay bubble color is randomly created it's a bubble coloring num I'll just briefly go to that this is the, the enumerations folder right here I've got a couple of enumerations used here but here's the different bubble colors and blue green blue red basically it's just like there's a color on the left and the color on the right should be the last name. okay so we're closing this down now we are going to go I'm going to just show you creating a new user because this is the part I think is kind of cool this is the progress bar and the validation component now I am going to sign out so what I'm going to do here is I am just going to I'm going to purposely leave username out and I'll just call this oh first I'll try to create mine because I'm already in here not Corby at and I'll say oh password one two three real secure something like that and now I'll just say sign up and I'll show you what happens here 
username must be between 5 and 20 characters. So that's the validation component because I have that set to being required. I think that's kind of neat. And I'll show you how you set that. We go to the validation. Let me stop it. Well, I'll just finish. Let me just finish this and I'll go back to Visual Studio in just a second. Okay. And now, so I'm going to just type in Corby again. And this time, watch what happens. Okay. The username is already taken. Please log in if this is you. Now, how it does that is the validation component. I have two um, properties that you can set that says unique callback required for username and I have another one for email address. So here I'll just change this instead of Corby. I'll change this to not Corby and we will sign up again. You notice I got two uh, check boxes there, two of those little green arrows and here's my little progress bar if you haven't, sorry, you have to put your mouse over that to kind of grow and get that just a second. So now it switches over here to the, it takes you automatically to the login component. So here I am going to try to remember uh, the username I know I just chose was not Corby. Like you can use either one here, username or email address. I probably should have put that in like another color. And then the password was password123, which is really secure. And I don't want to remember that, but I'll just log in. Same progress bar. Okay, and now Corby is the name that I chose because you know, it goes by the name that you display there, but I, I really should say display name, but I'll just change this to not Corby as I log in. Okay, and now not Corby is logged in here. So that is my, let me show you quickly how that works. I'm going to go under the hood and show you the validation component first. So to do that, I'm going to go to my join. Uh, okay, notice I got uh, these are all validation components. I even have the checkbox has one just to make it. It was just easier to line it up to have all the same types of components, you know, so that way I didn't have to worry about uh, matching my CSS because this validation component is part of my NuGet package data juggler dot blazer dot components, which is actually blazer chat started out as a sample project of that, but I moved blazer chat to its own repo. I thought it was kind of a neat project and might be easier to maintain not being part of the NuGet package. All right, and here, uh, let me show you briefly. We have the is unique callback required. You say equals true. So this one is the username. And then this one here is the email component. It also has uh, is required is true and is unique callback required is true. And you can, get, you can set a message. So if you set the message, and then I will show you under the hood, under the join component, let me call my validate method. Here it calls username component dot validate. And here I have to manually, I get the validation message to get the invalid reason from the component, which is that text, whatever you have here for your validation message. If it doesn't validate, that's the message that will be shown. The passwords also have a password mode password mode equals true. So that makes them appear as asterisks. I am going to switch over to my NuGet package uh, for datajuggler.blazer.components because that's where I've got the person I can think. That. Andre Furchell, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, show you his site. Let me find that real what CSS percentage circle. Right. This is all some of the different sites and I kind of just took it and you know turned it into a NuGet package. So put this link in the description of this video but I wanted to thank him because this progress bar because I like it if you saw my first two progress bars they kind of sucked so now I'll just go over and show you how this progress bar works so I'm going to go back over to my component to blazer chat and I wanted to show you in the join component I didn't know exactly how long it's going to take this is also part of data juggler dot blazer components as a sprite component but the only reason I'm using it because it has a timer that's really easy for me to start and stop. And I could have added a timer to this project, but it's just as easy to just set a timer. And I set the X position and the Y position to off screen so that I can still set the subscriber equals this. But if you make it invisible, it will never, this code here will never register. So I can't talk to the sprite component. I can't say, and I'll show you here in the join. If I go to register, that's the method I was looking at a second ago. Here's when my sprite comes in. Here's my invisible sprite. So if I run the program, watch, I'll just show you what happens.
Let's go to the join free. Now as soon as I click the join, that invisible sprite registers and it says, hey, I'm the invisible sprite. And this thing, okay, it's hi invisible sprite, and we'll step in F11 to step into that. And I don't need to talk to the chat component from here. If I did, I could call the chat component and say hi, you know, and register with it. We have our invisible sprite, and now I say invisible sprite, I'll just say dot start, should be somewhere, right. Invisible sprite, this is where I start the timer. I wanted to do the sign up in another thread. To thread. So here I start a new thread, the process new user sign up. I capture the user, and all I'm doing here, I'll go into it just to show you, but get all the information, and all these values, I mean, these are the bound values from this this join component. Okay, so that just gives me back a user. And then here, I you know, say is background, because I want the thread to run in the background, and then I just start it. So here I go to process new user sign up, and here, I pass in my user object, cast it as a user, and then here I get my environment variable it's called Blazor Chat. Hopefully everybody knows how to do this, but if not, just go to search, show search icon. In your search box, edit system environment variables. Click environment variables, click new and then put in your connection string to your database. And I've got some information in the docs about this in the readme, so I don't want to repeat it. But anyway, here though, this is where I create the password hash, and this is where it's, it's actually slower than I like, but it works, so I haven't changed it. Another thing I want to show you very briefly is the parent index page. Now the join component is my Blazor component parent, it's my Blazor component child too, but the parent index page property, let me show you that. Here I just cast the parent as a pages.index. Also have another method here called has parent index page. And in case you're wondering how I create, I'll just delete this real quick and show you. But let me show you regionizer. If I click on parent index page, I create has property. In alphabetical order, it creates that has property. So now instead of saying, parent index page not equal to null all throughout my code, I can just say if this dot has parent index page. So I prefer that, it's just an easier way, it makes your code kind of clean. The data tier is built using data tier.net. This to me is better than entity framework. And it's a pretty bold statement being that Microsoft has 130,000 employees and it's me and my dog. I've worked with me entity framework for about eight years now and I like mine because it creates all store procedure data tiers. I'm going to open up Blazor Chat. I'm going to just click on Manage Data to show you. Here's like a couple of methods. Um, oh, okay, I've already got my methods created, but I'll just show you how easy it is to create a store. Whenever you build a project with DataTier.net, it creates the load, create, find, and delete for you, but I'm actually going to show you just to create a custom one. I already have this created, but it won't hurt to do it again. Find by, I want to do a parameter type of single field. The field is going to be email. And then notice all these names are filled in for you. You can change it if you like. I'm going to just leave all this as it is. Um, I do want to put an order by. I'm going to say uh, single field order by name. Okay, and we don't need to do descending. And I'll just say next. Now I'm going to say confirm update and notice find by email address already exists. It does check for that if you have it. The user art says has been updated and the method find user by email address already exists because I've done this before but that's okay. Hit next and then here's the store procedure. Now if you want to update the store procedure manually you can do it yourself or you can click on the insert store procedure and click on install and it installs the store procedure. Now, that's datatier.net. To me, compared to using, uh, and then to call it, I'll just show you. And it's also got some Blazor data services features. I'll, I'll show you those very, very briefly. When you edit your project, here I've got this set to .NET Core, but whenever you don't, create a new project, set this to here. I've got some videos that cover this, but basically, 
you just click this create data tier in the project folder and it will create the uh, the project template that make up your four projects and then enable blazor data services that creates uh, your your binding so that if you make any changes in your application you get callbacks so you can save it was to me it was easier when I first started working with the to do application and I saved it I don't know it all works really well worked in this app it's funny I, you know, I uh, need to kind of it's hard for me to promote datatier.net but if I'd have had this application in 2005 I think the world would have just gone crazy on it because back then it was linked to SQL I mean linked to SQL wasn't out in any framework I mean in hibernate for C sharp was very new I think around then and you know but I, I just like it because it's all store procedures and I'm not going to cover any more of this but that was the how I work on the data tier I'm going to work I'll just show you a build all it doesn't hurt to to run it again and then I'll show you uh, if I go here to our store procedures here's the store pro now this is going to make SQL Server Management Studio pop up while I'm making a video so this is going to take this seems to take 20 seconds while I'm making a video. You're going to think nothing happened, but had SQL Server been open at the time, this would have been really easy. So give that just a second. I may pause this. This is going to, because I'm going to sit here and think nothing's happening, but somehow Microsoft is talking to SQL Server Management Studio. There. I, I knew it was going to do it. If I click it, usually I click it about four times and then get four instances because I was impatient. All right. So now I'm connected. Here's these store procedures. Now notice it has the database name selected. And I'll even just, here's the insert. Here's the update. Here's the find. Here's the delete. And even the custom one that we just created is here. Um, so that is, uh, here's the find. So anyway, that is my very brief tour of datatier.net. And I'll show you just ever quickly uh, the object library like here's our user class it uses partial classes so the data class this is all your fields that are in your database with and then okay and then this the business class is the modifications like where I just show you find by and you can add custom this doesn't even need to be here I answered somebody's question on Stack Overflow okay so but that is the, uh, and then the data tier, the gateway, this is your services. This is your Blazor data services. And this, what this does is, here's our methods that co-generated this. So the find by username, it just says gateway.find by username and find by gateway.find user by email address. I mean, I've used link. I know how to do that same thing and link to SQL, but I would have to go to my data context and you know I, the biggest reason I like mine though is the if there's an error in entity framework I've, I've written so much code with some of the interceptors and trying to get the error and compared to if you do have an error with mine you just say gateway dot get last exception and that takes about you know I don't know that to be I don't know why entity framework just assumes you're oh, I can't spell but they just assume, I, I, they just, to me, getting the errors out of entity frame, why is that not system dot, sorry, there, okay, equals, you know, and you can get the elastic exception, and that way, it just, I've even, at a couple places I worked, installed my tool when I had some problems with EF, and used to set up the exact same call and I'd get the error back and mine says oh you don't have this constraint you know or being satisfied or just something just extremely simple where entity framework if the database is not set up properly which I inherited a project that wasn't you know I took over somebody else's code and it was a mess once I got it straightened out then yeah everything worked but in the beginning you know entity framework just as I guess just puts too much uh, you know too many things can go wrong to me but I'm sure I'm just everybody else likes you know because Microsoft says hey this is what you got to use but anyway that is my uh, tour video of blazer chat stop by sometime I try to keep it open my, my list is on my list to do is find a way to play a sound when somebody logs in or at least optionally send you a message so that you can if I'm sitting here on another screen I won't know about it but and I'm also you know my goals are like here I thought about like how would you add messages or add a video or you know to turn it into more of a site but for now it's a demo project so that is my you know the code is on github 
and you know let me know if you have any questions if you have any video requests I'll answer them and thanks for watching all right have a great day